Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Gorilla Video, How to Produce and Post Punchy Video Messages. My name is Christy Farnbaugh, and I'm the Innovation and Engagement Director for the Ohio Arts Council. Part of my job is to plan and facilitate professional learning opportunities for the field. Webinars like this one are being offered because constituents tell us you'd like to learn ways to do your work more effectively and efficiently. And today we have more than 140 people registered for the session. So clearly this is a topic that we're all trying to learn more about and, and use video in better ways. Before I introduce today's presenter, Cindy Gaylard, a few technical details are necessary. First, everyone is on, who is on the line is muted or in listen-only mode. This will cut down on feedback for us uh, during the session. Um, also, Cindy's going to play some videos during her session, so be sure that your volume on your computer or your telephone or your headset is up, or you can turn it up if you can't hear. And depending on your internet connection, there may be a delay, a little bit of delay on those, and so she'll tell us a little bit more about that. But we do want you to know there will be, obviously, some video in the presentation. We'll use the question box in your control panel for capturing your questions for Cindy. I'll monitor those as we go through the session and facilitate a Q&A throughout, and then at the, at the end, toward the end of the hour, we'll have a little bit of time for that as well. We'll take a poll at the beginning to give Cindy some insight about who's on the call and what your needs are, so please provide your feedback accordingly. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted with all of our previous webinar recordings on the Ohio Rights Council's YouTube channel in a few days. You'll be notified uh, when the link is ready for viewing. And after today's webinar, you'll receive a link to a brief survey via email. Please take five minutes to give us your feedback about today's presentation. Your input helps us and Cindy design more meaningful professional development opportunities for the future. And with that, I'd like to introduce our presenter today. Cindy Gaylard is a multiple Emmy Award winning television producer from WOSU Public Media. She's produced num numerous cultural and historical documentaries plus special live to tape musical concerts. She currently oversees the production of both Broad and High and Columbus Neighborhoods, two fabulous shows on WOSU. And Cindy holds an MFA from The Ohio State University in Creative Writing. And she's just an all-around good gal. So we're really pleased to have you with us today, Cindy. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to Cindy Gaylord. Well, thank you, Christy. I am so excited to be here. This is one of my favorite things to do. Being in video, I started editing video and audio in 1980. That's how long and old I am at this point. <laughs> oh, Cindy. <laughs> but that's OK. I love doing this. So this is what I love doing. And I am very happy to be with you to show you how to get the best out of your tools that you have uh, really in your pocket, which is your cell phone. Everything that I have done to show you today on what you can do uh, to kind of produce video uh, and push it out to Facebook and push it out to other venues is done on my cell phone. That's all I did. I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't do any uh, major editing on this. I'm not even going to show you how to do an editing software, even though there are some out there that you can put on your phone. What I've done is kind of a theatrical performance, how we used to do video when we didn't have the editing tools that we have today. Um, so it's kind of a throwback a little bit, but I think some of these things are fun because you have people in front of the camera, you can do some fun little animation stuff, and then you can do uh, just basic kind of performance um, in front of the camera with, I did some stuff with uh, some desk toys this morning. So something that gets you attention. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. So I want to make this easy peasy lemon squeezy. I want to make this so you are really inspired to create some videos and start churning out for your product, your, um, your artwork, your gallery openings, things like that. I want you to be able to do a little bit more, getting more attention for what you guys do because I think you, everybody associated with the Ohio Arts Council is just wonderful and we want to get more people involved. So with that, let us move forward. So today I'm going to talk to you about two things and when you create video, when you create anything, if you're an artist you kind of know this, but let's just go over this a little bit so we're all on the same playing field. There are two parts to things. One is the workflow. That's the behind the scenes, right? That's the how of video production, how things get done. And that's 
camera work, that's positioning, maybe a little lighting, that kind of stuff. The stuff that you would see if, you, if it's pointed out to you, right? The second thing is the what. What are you doing in front of the camera? What's on screen? What's the message? So I'm going to go back and forth. Um, you know, an art form follows a uh, function sometimes. That's something we've used before. The same thing applies here. You just have to think about it just a little bit differently. That's all. So if I look at a workflow, I'm saying, here's the things I did behind the scenes, and here's, if I'm talking about content, this is the thing that I'm trying to get somebody to do with the video that I've created. Either push somebody to come uh, uh, to an event, or um, that's basically what I was doing with these, um, or to change their mind about something. You know, that's the, the content part of it. Okay, so I'm going to move forward. This, I am sure most of you recognize, this is Mary Gray from the Rife Gallery. Now, Mary is my guinea pig, and she was a wonderful guinea pig. If you know her, you know that she's a great performer. And I wanted some videos to show to you, so I said, hey, I know that you have a need for a few things. I know that you are going to be using some of these um, video concepts in your department. Um, do you mind if we just kind of if I come down and we, we do some videos. So I'm going to show you three videos that we did. And the total production time of being in, I hate to say, FaceTime. FaceTime with Mary was about three hours. Um, or actually two hours. And then there was one hour that uh, she and I chatted on email about what we wanted. But I wanted to show you what we're going to do. Now, if you can't hear this, that's OK. That means your internet connection is um, a little bit too slow, and that's fine. I'm going to post these on YouTube as well, so if you don't want to go all the way through the webinar again uh, just to see these, that's fine. You can go on YouTube, but basically what you're going to see is Mary talking to the camera. That's all it is, so hopefully you'll be able to hear this. So here we go. Do you work with a whistler? Do they do bird calls too? Think about this. The Rife Gallery has banned whistling since 1888. Okay, so that's a fun little video. What she wanted to do is Mary's specific goal is that she wants to get people to come in during lunchtime. You know, the Rife Gallery is downtown Columbus, Ohio. There are a lot of office workers there. So she wanted to get people to come to the gallery. And what that said, in case you didn't, weren't able to hear it, was that we were trying to appeal to people who are in their cubicles and they work with somebody who whistles. And they want to get out of their cubicle because whistling, I'm sorry, in my mind drives me nuts. So I was just going with some of them, something like that that would, um, you know, spark attention, right? Okay. So I'm going to show you another one. And hopefully I can get to it. There, whoop, nope, that's not the way to advance it. And here, it's same concept. I am trying to get to an office worker who's in a cubicle. And please come to the Rife Gallery during lunchtime. All right? Let me get to my, there it is. And we're going to play another one. Do you know the signs of cubicle dependency? Irritability, eye rolling, and the inability to walk more than two and a half feet without assistance? It's time you and your cubicle see other spaces. We have a little end page there. She's a really great performer. We all know Mary Gray's a really great performer. Still, we had to do a little bit of rehearsing on that. Uh, but it's, I'm appealing to an office worker who really needs to get out of their cubicle. Pretty simple. And then we've got one last one. So I don't know about you, but after Christmas, I have so much chocolate. Uh, I'm on chocolate overload with my coworkers. Uh, we're all in a program to actually get out at lunchtime and do some walking to get some of these calories off of us. Anyway, so that was another uh, kind of concept that we came up with. So let's go through this really quickly. Let's go. I'm going to break this down in workflow. The stuff that you kind of behind the excuse me behind the scenes. Um, I targeted a specific message. 
I talked to Mary Gray, what do you want to do with these? And we created uh, three little uh, scripts and said, hey, let's have fun with this. Um, but she wanted the lunch crowd. So I sat down and I wrote uh, scripts kind of based on our conversation. Conversation was really quick. It wasn't, we didn't go down deep into the mission of the organization, as you say. Um, you know, that's for a different kind of platform. This is short and humorous. Uh, you don't always have to make these humorous, um, but it's based on what's called a testimony. A testimony uh, is something that you see in infomercials all the time. I have a problem. I burn food on my pans. Oh, look, a stainless steel pan, right? So it's somebody that is saying how their life got better or how your life can get better. So it's always about the, the viewer. Now, the reason we do that is that you want to sell emotion. You want to sell something that gets better better because of the experience that you're offering. Notice we didn't say, hey, at the Roth Gallery today, we have Monet, right? I didn't say that. What I said was, your life's going to get better because you came here. That's motivating. That's what motivates people, is to make their life better. So we targeted a very, very specific message, the lunch crowd. We, I wrote some scripts back and forth with Mary on what she can and can't say. That was really, really quickly. I said, hey, you want to do this You know, humorous? She said, fine. She's really good. Do you think you could do humorous, or do you have an inner ham? Do you have somebody at your organization that can do that? That's perfectly fine. Try it. If it doesn't feel right, then that's okay. Back it off and do something uh, maybe more straightforward. Hey, if you're really stuck in your cubicle, why don't you come to the Rife Gallery? We've got a lot of really great stuff here. That's perfectly fine. Um, so the back part of that, I wrote the script, and then what I also did is identified how am I going to, in video, show where we are, she says Rife Gallery, but I also want to reinforce, so in doing a commercial or PSA or something like that, you always reinforce uh, visually what you've just said, right? So I wanted to figure out how do I do that. Well, I said, let's do some graphics on an easel, really easy, print out, and um, I am going to what's called a whip pan, but I'm going to pan from Mary, and I'm going to pan to the graphics, on the, and we're going to rest on that. That's called an end page. You see that all the time when you do a PSA, when you do even infomercials, um, when you do uh, a commercial, those type of things are all end pages. So my end page is not in the camera. My end page is actually on the easel. So in this particular testimony, we can talk about different testimonies and do a little bit of brainstorming, but this particular testimony um, is, I knew Mary Gray was going to be the right person for talent. What I try to do is think of the person that um, would be good at doing something like this and then write for them. I don't usually write a script and then make somebody do it. That's just not going to work. I look at who I have in my kind of cadre of, of people around me, and I say, hey, you know what? You're really good at humor, or you're really good at dancing, or hey, can you play the guitar for me? Or all of that, I'm going to write something around your best strength, and that's how I craft scripts. Okay, so I really kind of, between script writing and, and identifying, it's, it's kind of a uh, very, very coupled process. Okay? And then what you don't see is, of course, we had to schedule the location. I needed quiet time for a couple of hours. Uh, on one of those videos, if you did, were able to hear that, um, there was some background noise, but that's okay. I mean, life is life. As long as you don't have... Uh, you know, Harley Davidson going by or rescue vehicles or things like that, most of the time you're going to be fine. Um, two hours was our full, you know, from start to finish, and that's fuddling. I'll show you some behind the scenes uh, photographs. Um, that was start to finish. That my back end script time was about an hour, so so far we put in about three hours of time. And that's also build in some rehearsal time. 
The more you can rehearse, the better off it's going to be. We did probably four or five takes per, if I recall, and um, it was really fun. We tried to keep it fun. Keep it fun, keep it quick, don't overthink it, right? It helps to keep your message really targeted and very short. Most web, all of this stuff I'm building for the web, you don't want anything more than 30 seconds. If you have to go over 30 seconds, make it definitely less than a minute. Honestly, um, people just don't, they, they have the, the attention span of a gnat anymore. Um, so I'm trying to keep it punchy, I'm trying to get people interested, I'm trying to give them little bits of information so they'll, look, they'll want to know more, right? This is unusual, Mary Gray is looking at me. What's going on here? So hopefully they'll click on something else that you might have that's on your website and they'll keep, uh, uh, keep interested. So I'm going to go to another part of the workflow, which is production. We just talked about the back end of it, which is basically stuff I do at my desk and then I schedule the time that we're going to be there. Now we're going to move a little bit toward phone camera field production is what I'm going to call it, is how do you, how do you actually make it work so it's not quite so jittery, so you can hear. That's one of the biggest things. Um, what I do is I call it stack. It's steady, turn, approach, and cue. So, steady the camera. Always use two hands. Always use two hands. Always use two hands. Just do it. Don't even try to, you think you can hold it steady, you can't. I can't do it. I've been doing camera work for a long time. You just can't do it. Turn the camera so it's in landscape rather than, rather than portrait. When you upload, some of you have probably already done uploading, to a video, you know that it's going to look funny if it's in portrait. The sides are going to either be bl uh, blank or they're going to have some kind of weird background to it. So you always want to mimic your television set or your computer, which is it's always on horizontal. Okay. Now here's the other thing. Approach your subject. subject. I'll get there in a minute. The closer you are to the subject, the better audio quality that you have. I wanted to do this webinar so we didn't have to have any other equipment other than your camera. You can buy uh, a small microphone for your iPhone or for other uh, smartphones. You can do that. That's fine. It's a little lavalier. It's great. Um, it does bump up the quality just a little bit. But you can also get a bit closer. So I am probably within four feet of her. Um, if I'm farther away, then the audio is really horrible. So you approach your subject. You get closer to your subject. It's going to feel weird if you're not used to doing video. It's going to feel weird. If you're the camera person, it feels weird to encroach on somebody's space. If you're the person who's presenting, it's weird to have a camera in your face. Get over it. It's easier the more time uh, gets easier the more you do it. Um, I, that is a lesson I tell all of my new videographers who have never done news, is that they have to get closer to the action. They have to get closer to their subjects, and they still have a hard time with it. Um, the closer you are, the better your audio. Also, the better your video. Now, cueing your subject. What we did is a little relationship with the camera operator and the, the talent, cue your subjects. What I do is I count down three, two, one, and we go. But I do it differently. The three and the two are audible. The one is when I hit the record button and at zero I nod to my talent and that's for them to go. Okay, now you, you can do this if you know how to clip and, and trim your video, which I'll show you a little bit here. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it makes it a little easier because you don't have any audio that is going to bleed into their presentation or their lines. Okay, um, we do that a lot when we do uh, stand-ups with our hosts. We do a three, two, and then we cue them. That's just kind of what we do. Regardless of what you do, you, you can negotiate between the camera operator and your talent, <clears throat> any way of doing that, but they need to know when they're going to be recorded. And you need to know when to record it so that you have some clean audio between your interaction 
and they're starting their their actual uh, lines. Okay. So what we do is three, two, silent one, in which I'm recording, and then I nod, and then she starts. So here we are at the Rife Gallery. That is an easel I borrowed. This is the one thing I had forgotten to bring was an easel. Um, it was an art gallery. Thank goodness they had an easel. Um, and I'm actually pasting the end page. They were able to print out their logo for me. And if you see there on the right, Rife Gallery, let's make lunch time fun again. Thank you, Kim, for doing that because um, I, my handwriting is really terrible. She's an artist, Kim. Thank you, Kim Webb, uh, for putting that on there. I am pointing for Mary. I'm looking for a little pool of light that she might be able to stand in. Little tricks like that make it a little bit better. Um, the more light you have, the better it is. Um, natural light is always really good, but we've got little pools of light from these lights that are on the ceiling, and I had her stand in one of those. That's fine. There we are recording a little bit. We've got a little bit of natural light coming out. Now, I did this during the day, of course, because I wanted more light. We started about 2, probably about 2.15, 2.20. When I arrived, we, we had uh, to build the end page first, make sure we knew what that was, uh, create that little post-it note. And then we had to do some rehearsals. But the point is, is that give yourself enough light. Um, do it during the day. It's going to be harder on smartphones to do it at night because they're just, it's going to be a lot more grainy. Now, that is a made-up prompter. That is a piece of paper that I have stuck to my cell phone. And what I did was cut out a little, you see it there above like gallery, the G in gallery, that is cut out so that I the lens can pop through. Now, there's a trick in um, video production. You've all seen prompters, I'm sure, <clears throat> excuse me, run in front of a lens, right? So it looks as if you're looking right into the lens, but they're not. They're reading um, an electronic projection of the copy. Well, we don't have that here. It doesn't mean you can't kind of mimic it. Um, what I want to do is make sure that her eye line is close enough to the lens so it doesn't look like that she's reading it. Um, we looked at this piece of paper actually being uh, taped to my chest, and it just looked weird, right? And I had her, I held it up above the camera, and it looked weird, and I said, well, we'll just do it gorilla style. And so I taped it, taped the piece of paper to the iPhone and she was able to read it. Now, some of you probably noticed maybe her eyes wandered a little bit, but not too bad. I mean, you would norm, you would see that kind of in a uh, normal conversation. Somebody moves their eyes a little bit differently. Um, but we're trying to keep you in disbelief, let's say, if, you, if there are certain things that suspend your disbelief, take you out of that, you're gonna go, oh my God, her eye line is just weird. I have no idea what she's doing. It's distracting. So I want to minimize the distractions. So that's what I did. Pretty easy. All we had to do was um, put a landscape, right? Uh, make sure that we were able to print that so she could see it, and then I cut it out. Not, not a big deal. Notice that um, I am pretty close to her. Um, I'm probably, what, three and a half feet away from her. Um, and I rehearsed this. She and I rehearsed this two or three times. Now the first um, Kim will tell you the first, my first thought directorially was that she's going to say the lines kind of in a very deadpan way. And she did that a couple of times and I thought, well, that's okay, but it's not quite the emotion that I'm looking for. So what I did is say, you know, forget all that. Just say it the way you would say it. And she said it very sweetly and very nice. I like that a lot better. So that's what we went with. So you need to, if you create these scripts or you create um, these stand-ups, know that what you might have in your head is not the capability or the, uh, uh, the intention of somebody else, right? We're not all, you know, high-paid New York actors, um, even though uh, Mary is really great, it just didn't work. So, um, you know, fool around with it, see what, see what you can do. Um, so, the next one, I think, is just, there's the prompter. What I also did, if you could, 
kind of look at it is just I cut off the bottom of it. It was flapping. The, um, the actual page was flapping a little bit. So you have to adjust during all of this stuff. And it's okay. You're playing around. We had a really great time. It was a lot of fun. So our workflow, we needed to get the, I'm just going to go through this really quickly because I think I've said all this stuff. Um, we needed a Rife Gallery logo. We needed a yellow sticky note. Thanks, Kim. We needed an easel. We needed an old styrofoam poster. We needed scissors, tape, and the prompter um, kind of adjustment. Okay, Pretty simple stuff, all guerrilla style, all stuff that you most of the time will have. I did not, uh, the one thing I forgot was the easel, so we were able to find that when, uh, when we got to the gallery, which was great. Um, and there's a close-up of the, the little bitty lens, um, which is great. So once you record it, um, what I did was trim the head of the video so that it looks as if she is already starting her video. Um, and if you've ever used an iPhone in the trim, it is infuriating. I'll just tell you that. You have to hold down and the video, but it will work. Be patient. Give yourself a little bit of time and always preview and accept only that which you think is absolutely perfect. Um, so you have to hold down and um, just move it just a little bit, preview it, make sure it's where you want it to be. What you don't want is somebody standing there for a few seconds and looking kind of goofy, unless it's part of your script, of course. So it's um, it just makes it look that much better. You don't have to do that, but it's just one of those things that makes it, it, it jumps right away. As soon as somebody clicks on it, you're in, right? There's no preamble. So post your video. This is the one thing, um, and Christy, if we can do that poll, that would be great. Um, I know that what I said, can, yeah. Yeah, we can indeed do it. Here it comes. Okay. Uh, which of the following platforms do you currently use for sharing your video content? And if you could check all that applies, that would be great. Um, there is a few things. Oh, look at that. I've never seen it do it real time. I'm sorry, I'm fascinated by the metrics in the background. <laughs> and, the fact that, and the fact that you all are so polite, you're doing it. That's so good. Thank you. 68, 69% in like, what, five seconds? Heck a doodle. Yeah. Man. And when we close great. it, I think we can project it live so you all can see awesome. it as well. Awesome. That is great. All right, we're at 82%. Last, last votes. We're going to close it. Man, within a minute, you guys are good. All right. I know, right? Yeah. All right, it's been a minute. 85% of you voted, and now. Awesome. Okay, are great. The Fabulous. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. Facebook, you can do that now that the Facebook has a uh, its own video player. Um, those of you who tried to post to Facebook, what when it first came out. The player for Facebook was terrible. Uh, now they have a much better player, uh, and you can do that. You used to have to do YouTube and then link it, right? Um, and then embed videos on your own website. I'm interested, um, for those of you who embed, um, you more than likely use YouTube. Very few people create their own um, player, and that's fine. I think WordPress has its own player, totally fine. Uh, what we do is we put it on YouTube, WSU puts it on YouTube, and then Instagram. Instagram's going to come back. Um, the What we have found is that people are migrating, or at least it's generationally, of course, from uh, Facebook to Instagram. So if you want to get a younger audience, keep posting to Instagram. What we do is we, we post everywhere. WOSU has a version that goes on Facebook. Um, we use YouTube as something to embed in other places or just a general link. Um, we use YouTube to embed in our own website. We also have something called Cove, which is our own player, and we use that. And um, we're not getting into Instagram, but we've been pushed into doing that. Basically, what 
my advice is put it everywhere. That's what we've been doing, and we're getting a lot more, um, a lot more response from that. So um, just keep doing that. If you only do one, that's fine. Maybe you want to do another one. Pick up another thing. If you only do Facebook, then do Instagram. Um, so anyway, that's just my advice. So cool. Great. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. You're in control again. Am I? Okay, there I am. Yeah. Oh, except I have to get back to... It doesn't like it now. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, those are the ba basics. Um, and we will start our review. Okay. So, short videos, 30 seconds max. If you're doing something for Facebook, um, I would definitely keep it 30 seconds. Um, if you are trying to promote something or get attention, you're being kind of a circus barker. You don't want to go into base, you know, big details about things. They'll get details ar around the information that's posted with it. What you want to do with these videos is just make it fun, punchy, interesting, so that they have something to say, hey, wow, that's interesting, and then they will go and look for details later, particularly events. Don't worry too much about video quality. When I mean too much, um, a lot of people say or have said, I should go and get some professional video done and it would make, it reflects on my organization or my art. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. What we have found is that just stuff that's off the cuff gets as many views as some of the stuff that's professionally done. Case in point, we had one of our hosts try to um, throw a piece of popcorn up in the air and catch it. We were on set, or on site rather, we were um, recording, we had five people around us, and our web person came over and said, hey, do you mind if I take some video? It was going to be a shtick that he did at the end of the show. We were at a movie theater. He did it, he missed it, right? It wasn't the funniest thing in the world, and the video quality was terrible. It got a lot of hits. So yeah, you know, be mindful of it. If you're going to produce something and spend a little time, try to bump up the quality a little bit by finding those light pools, by getting closer so you can get better audio, all of that. But you know, sometimes don't don't fret over it is what I'm trying to tell you. If you have time and you have control over it, then try to be patient. Get it as high as you can, but some of these other things like, you know, Posting videos of your cat, for goodness sake. Um, do that and you'll get tons of people uh, that do a hit. Do worry about adequate lighting. Um, that's the one thing you, if you're going to get a really, really high grain in there, eh, it's going to be a little bit tougher. That's why I say if you're going to create one of these, try to do natural light, try to do it at the middle of the day, um, and that just helps you a little bit, helps your, um, your viewer out a little bit rehearse these type of things, but not too much. You know, you don't want to um, be the director from hell and make them go over like 5,200 times. You don't want to do that. We rehearsed a couple of things, and, it, it was, and then we recorded maybe four of those um, little videos and decided, hey, I like this one better than that one. I did this better than that one. And then move on. You're done. That's it. Enjoy the process, for goodness sakes, here's, it, what you want people to do is come away in any interaction with your website, with um, your organization, you want them to come away with a smile on their face in some way, shape, or form. If you're not enjoying it, they will definitely not enjoy it. So if you're not enjoying it, walk away, get a cup of coffee, do something. Give yourself enough time. And that's the thing. Most of us are already under the crunch of doing about a thousand other things. I totally get that. But if you plan that this is going to take me three hours, three hours is what I'm giving to this process, then give yourself three hours. Don't try to, to wrap it up early. Give it three hours because part of it is going to be a little frustration. Part of it is a little problem solving like we did with the, the prompter. Part of it is like, oh, I had to wait for, you know, uh, Harley Davidson going by because my audio is going to be ruined. Enjoy the process 
other people will enjoy what you give them. So here are some other things you can do with this basic format. It's a very uh, versatile format. If you're a gallery, you can do a mini interview with an artist. What I would say is rehearse a little bit about what you're going to say. Don't just walk up and say, let's talk about your work. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Be really specific about what you're going to talk about. I've noticed you love the color blue. That's a lot better than I would like to talk about your art. Be very specific about what you're going to say. And tell the artist, hey, I really want to keep this under a minute. Can you, can you do that for me? If you can keep it under 30 seconds, I would even like it better. So you can negotiate that and be very specific. Now, what we didn't do, what I wanted to do with Mary, but we didn't get a chance to, is that you can do a mini description of art. You can say, this is, look at this wonderful exhibit of just eggs. I knew that came around um, here and it came down in Portsmouth. They're eggs. That's cool. What's interesting about this exhibit? Um, most of the time, that it, that's very complicated, but you've got to pull out one thing that people will be um, wowed about or awe or um, inspired by or tickled by. Something that they can hang their hat on that is emotion-based that says, oh, wow, I want more of that feeling of this. Or, you know, wow, that sounds really socially interesting. I should go and um, take in this art exhibit because it's going to move people in a different way. So do many descriptions with a curator, with an artist, with uh, the uh, executive director of the, the gallery. Just something that people will be interested in. You can do a mini pitch for your event. You know, um, you can walk up with a cup of coffee or maybe a pot of coffee and say, I'm going to be pouring coffee all night just for you. We're going to have this event. Come on down. I want to um, I want to know what you think about this. Always make it about them, though. Always make it about them. If you go on and say, we've got an event about, you know, Georgia O'Keeffe, that's good, that's great, and it's wonderful. I mean, that's a really big name, but we always don't, not always get Georgia O'Keeffe, right? Um, if you make it about, hey, it's Thursday, you know what, it's the end of the week, we're going to have a nice wine tasting here, why don't you come on down, oh, by the way, we got some really great things on the, on the wall we can talk about. Always make it about them and what they can get by coming to you. Again, keep it about one thing or one or two things. Make it about the viewer. Tap into emotions, right? And don't give away everything. This is a teaser. This is not even a PSA. This is even shorter than that. Keep it as short as you possibly can. It's one of those things to get attention, they get interested, they do a little bit more research, hopefully they're going to read a little bit around. If you're going to put it on Facebook, you've got, a whole, you've got that whole uh, place that you can post around. So they're going to get more information there. Okay, I'm going to move on to a different kind of video that you can do. I did this all on my iPhone, and it's a time lapse. And if I can get my, there it is. This doesn't have any audio, so don't worry about that. So, one of the needs that Rife Gallery has, and let's see if I can, there we, I can pause it there. One of the needs is that uh, they have workshops um, at lunchtime. And they're going to start uh, for this particular one, March 8th, right? I don't have March 8th on there, do I? Nope. All I have is the name of what they're going to do, which is poetic text and collage, which, you know, at this point, this is form following function, right? It's just a fun little thing. I'm going to play it one more time because I really like it. Um, and that, that's all it is. It's just a punchy little thing to get a little bit of attention. That's all it is. Kind of fun and um, easily done. I'm going to show you how to do that. 
that is my office. This is the office I'm in right now. Um, I used the Rife Gallery Ohio Arts Council page that we printed off uh, on Tuesday uh, that we did the uh, videos for with Mary Gray at the Rife Gallery. I stole that. I stole the little uh, sticky note, same sticky note. Um, and what I did was take two trash cans, equal size tra trash cans. It doesn't work if one is smaller than the other, by the way. Um, and I cut out a little hole for the camera lens uh, on a piece of cardboard. And what you don't see is the cardboard is very securely attached to both of those trash cans. And I have got weights, I've got books and notebooks on top of each trash can. That way, if because my workspace is so small, if I happen to hit it with my arm, then the, the conceit of the time lapse is lost. So it'll, it'll move. There it is. There's my iPhone. It's got a time lapse. And all I do is hit play. And I put in I, the, all, all the action is me. right? Now, there's a couple of things that I want to tell you about this. The um, time lapse on the iPhone is really good. It's built into your photos which is great. I would not use it, however. What I found out is that the time lapse auto uh, rotates the image. In, I've got an iPhone 6, and you can't un auto rotate it. Um, it. I tried resetting my phone. I tried um, the, um, the compass reset. I tried everything online and went, why is this doing this? Um, so I downloaded something that's free. I'm going to look up on my iPhone right now. It's a free time lapse. It's called Hyperlapse, H-Y-P-E-R-L-A-P-S-E, Hyperlapse. Um, and it doesn't auto-rotate. Um, I did all this before I actually um, created the, the time lapse, so I didn't want to go back. But anyway, it's the same, same thing. It's a time lapse. You can get an app, and I know that there are other apps for um, uh, the Android because a friend of ours, um, one of my coworkers has that, and they do time lapses there. Uh, time lapse is fun. I had a great time. Um, it is a little bit labor, inten uh, labor intensive, but it's not not that bad. Um, there's the little um, lens for my iPhone sticking out. No problem. Now, in all fairness, I want to show you the first time lapse that I did, and I thought this was going to be the best thing ever. I thought. I'm going to show you that I'm cutting out all of this stuff. And for the first word, it kind of works. And then things got kind of sticky. I don't know what happened. Well, I actually do know what happened. Um, what I did was I stole a friend's magazine, right? And to make it easier on the eye and make it speed up the process on my end of it, I found the P-O-E-T-I-C. I found all the letters in the, the magazine pages up front so that I can just go to them, cut them out, and put it down. When I got to the last T in text, of course, it all fell off my lap. So I had to go find them. Um, I think it would have worked a little bit better, but what I found is that even still, even if I had, um, even if I had it in my lap, I felt like by the time we got past the I in poetic, it was really, really long. So what I did was, is what you saw. We'll go back to it and we'll compare. This goes fast enough that I can read it. And that's really what the whole point is, right? I have to read it. So I chose to do it again and do it a little bit faster. Um, and uh, I think it worked out a little bit better than that. Um, the other, I was, there was one other thing I wanted to show you about this, and I can't remember. Oh, there it is, work phone time lapse. Um, lock the camera down. You saw that I, I had um, put it down tape, make sure that nothing moves, nothing moves. 
make sure your work surface is clean because if you um, look at a grody work surface, if you've done all that work and you see a ring, a coffee ring, it will make you really mad. Trust me, <laughs> I've done that before. Um, I rotated the video in iMovie um, and it worked out just fine, but I would say go get that other, uh, that other app. There are several other apps out there and the app was free, the one that I downloaded, and it was great because you could actually decide how fast it's going to be. In iPhone, it doesn't give you that option to say, oh, I want a really fast time lapse or a really short time lapse. It doesn't give that to you. Um, so I would actually go and, and download something else. Now, in all of these, we haven't talked about the export. Um, when you get, you want to uh, push it to Facebook, YouTube, all of that stuff. A lot of people still, and we, and we do this here as well, depending on the video, uh, if I want to do a higher quality video, let's say I want to do the Mary Gray videos, I would export it to my computer using AirDrop or using the phone jack. Because if you take it and you want to um, put it to Facebook from your phone, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, your phone will do a little mini compression. And what we'll do is it will make it into a smaller format. You don't necessarily want to do that. They're already small anyway. You want to maximize um, the format that you have. So I would advise taking it to your um, taking it to your laptop, and then posting it from there. If you're out in the field and you happen to catch something, like the popcorn and one of our hosts and whatever, it doesn't make any difference. Just go ahead and post that. But if you're going to spend a lot of time, like on a time lapse, or you're going to do uh, something, you know, a stand-up, or um, have talent, or something like that, yeah, spend a little time and make sure it's as the highest quality it can be. Okay, here's the last video I have for you and then we can start um, if you've got any questions we can start working on questions and um, we're at uh, yeah we're at 218 awesome 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 so um, still working on the theme that I am trying to push people to go to the Rife Gallery at lunch right this is what I want to do so this is an office setup and some of you might recognize as that as a uh, nice little what they used to call analog toys right Hello, come back here. Let's actually play the video. This has no audio as well, so don't worry about that. So that was just something that I liked because, you know, you can be comedic with it. You can have fun with it. Um, that particular toy um, never worked right. And I thought, hey, you know, I can kind of play with something with that. You know, I can make it funny. Um, and why not? That took just a little bit of time. Uh, you will see a binder clip just to hold my my uh, phone there so I can have two hands to play with. And again, that's the exact same place that I did my time lapse. Um, it probably took me an hour to do all this only because I had to take down all the stuff I did with the time lapse stuff and clean everything. Um, and I did two versions of this one. Um, oh, and there's the binder clip. That works fine. It's on video. It's great. Worked, worked fine. The other thing is don't hit your your phone if you're going to do this and I was kind of hugging the phone and it's kind of hard to do do two things at once but you can do it I had to I rehearsed where the Rife Gallery logo is going to come in I rehearsed where that little tagline is going to come in I rehearsed that I probably did six of these to see if they were going to work right and I'm going to show you one that I decided not to do not I wouldn't post this and there's a couple reasons why and I want it and that's content related not necessarily workflow or production related so I'm going to play it for you
So I think that's funny. I think the timing of that works a little bit better. But the one thing that the psychology of this is, if you think about this, am I a Rife Gallery worker that's sitting there playing with a desk toy and I'm saying, please get me out of the Rife Gallery to make lunchtime fun again because I have branded the Rife Gallery as something that is permanent within the lens or, or, or the set, rather. Um, so be really careful about that. Do I want to do that? I think it's funnier than the other one. I personally would have po I would post the first one because it's something that comes in as a solution to the problem, which is boredom rather than the boredom's happening with the Rife Gallery logo there. So that's something that, you know, be really careful when you do one of these. Make sure your psychology and your logic is right. Um, you don't want to give off the, the wrong impression. Even though it's a better take, I still would use the first one. So let's uh, brainstorm a little bit about still life. You can use desk toys. You can do all sorts of things. I have a lava lamp in here. Um, pouring, if, if you do any kind of um, happy hour or anything like that, getting a close-up of pouring champagne. Any adult on a Thursday at lunchtime is going to say, my God, give me that. What is it? So use what you have and keep it simple. It doesn't have to be really complex. Use... You don't have to use a place card. You don't have to use what I did, but I'm always one to reinforce. Even though you're going to see this on your branded Facebook and your branded post, I always like to bring in that third brand that says, this is what it's about. Um, so there is absolutely no question. Process is a great way to use time lapse. If you're a painter and you set up your iPhone and you create a painting, everyone loves that. They love seeing process. Um, we had one, a really big hit for us was that we created a time lapse dolly, a really big one for our professional camera. We had a motor, we had everything. The time lapse itself was in a documentary, but there was a time lapse of the time lapse. Our, our uh, Brent Davis, our boss, had bought a new uh, phone that had a time lapse um, uh, app in it, and he set it up and did a time lapse of the time lapse. So that was actually really interesting to a lot of people. So don't don't undersell the behind the scene process of what you do. So time lapse of putting up a uh, installation. A lot of people at galleries have done that. I know the Wexner Center has done that. Do that. People love that. I love seeing a transformation of blank walls to something that's really great. Keep the frame simple. The less distractions, the better. The little um, thing that I just did, I took everything off my desk. Um, even the time lapse, I took. there was nothing else on there other than the piece of paper and those cut up letters. An experiment and redo is necessary. It is a soul-sucking exercise when you put in so much work and it doesn't work, right? It is. Well, get over it. Just do it again. Um, you, sometimes you have to redo it. That's the way it goes. Um, but what I have found is don't be so attached to that one thing that you think, that was the perfect thing. Yeah, you can get perfection in a different way. It'll just come out a little bit different. That's fine. So, um, questions. Do we have any questions? Anything I love at all? Yeah, yes. I do. And I just want to thank you, Cindy, for the for the chuckles. I must have, you know, kind of laughed or chuckled fifteen times during your <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Um, and I love the hacks. I feel like we maybe we should have called this like easy video hacks, right? The simple mm -hmm. things, the, the um, prompter on your phone. Holy cow, I'd never have thought of that, but I always complain when I see people who are not looking at the camera. So yeah. anyway. Um, all right, so we have a question. They're starting to come in there more. I do have one, though. Um, the first question is, do you link um, users back to your website with each video post? And if so, how do you communicate that? 
Okay, so let me let me ask a little bit more about that. Do I link my? Uh, tell me that question again. Sorry, I, I was going in three different yes. directions on the first. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Do you link users back to your website with each video post? And if so, how do you communicate that? Uh, do I link people back to my website? No, we don't. We don't, we don't, we don't. We, we leave the Facebook page, the Facebook experience. We leave the Instagram, the Instagram experience. We figure that there are a lot of people that just want to deal with Instagram. They just want to deal with Facebook. Um, we used to link them back. And, and honestly, I'm not an IT person, so I don't know that. Other than you insert the URL of your face of your web page into your Facebook uh, posting, you know where you can type in the words and things like that. Um, what what we have found and what our IT people say is leave people on Facebook. They some of those people will never go to your website. Um, on your Facebook page, though, you want to make sure that your website URL is prominent. You don't want to have them go digging for it. So make sure that it's prominent, and if they want to go to your website, they do that. But it's always at either the top of the page or it's on the side, and you can do that. Does that? I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, stay with that a minute. I'm going to combine. I'm going to play off that question with the next one. Sure. Do you usually post a message with your video? Well, it depends. Uh, if you want, if you have an event, yeah. If you want them to do something specific, sure. You bet. If you want, um, like this whole lunchtime thing, um, take it as one more opportunity to drive that message home. But make sure it's a simple message. You don't want to bring out, you know, your entire uh, uh, spring, you know, agenda, uh, your spring season posted there. Don't do that. Just do that one thing. And if you have to repost a video and get another message, like this is our next workshop then do that, but don't put on too much up there. So if we did, um, let's say we posted the Mary Gray lunchtime, you know, Whistler, I would post something kind of provocative. Got it. Are you sitting next to a Whistler? Here's your escape hatch. You know, so be fun with it. Have a great time. And then maybe put a little bit about come to the Rife Gallery at, on, on your lunch hour. Don't put too much just make it provocative enough that they are going to click the video and find out more. Great. And another one. Mm -hmm. um, how, and this is a little more technical, how do you use two clips to make one video? Okay, yeah, that's a whole other webinar. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, I, um, I downloaded, um, you can do that. There, um, you can do it in iMovie in your mm -hmm. phone. I have an app called Real Director 2, which I uh, looked at a lot of the apps uh, in the App Store. Real Director 2 for me is closer to, it makes sense to me editing, uh, may not make sense to people who don't edit all the time, but for me editing it makes more sense. Um, we can do a whole other webinar on doing that. It can be complicated, but it, it's, it's not. What I would say is if you're interested in doing that, Go to YouTube. YouTube is, I go to YouTube for things that I, I do with my editing system, with, which is Adobe Premiere. How do I make this title tool work? How do I get this to work? Type in, how do I edit on my iPhone? And you're going to get a million ways and million tutorials on how to do that. It's complicated, but it'd take me another an hour to an hour and a half to show you how to do it. Great. Also, on your on your survey that you'll get here in just a few minutes, um, there's a place where you can tell us about other topics you'd like us to present in our webinars. So feel free to give us some feedback on that, um, topics or presenters. Uh, I am not seeing any more questions, and we're right at 2.30, and we always want to honor your time. So, um, Cindy, thank you so much for this really fun and informative um, webinar and, and sort of helping us demystify a little bit the, how we do video. Um, and, and working with what we have to work with. So thank you for that. And thank you to everyone who was on the call today. We really appreciate you giving us an hour of your time, and we hope you found value in it. 
and that you too will be creating some really fun and creative uh, videos in the very near future. Um, again, this session has been uh, recorded and will be on our YouTube channel, I would say the first of next week. Uh, and we'll send you a survey soon so you can give us your feedback. All right. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.